Okay guys, welcome back to Hey Now. I wanted to make a video for you today basically because there's such a huge uproar about the size of the red raw files and I get it. Yeah, it's a lot. You know, I have a one terabyte card. I could get about an hour and 24 minutes of 6K red raw 24 frames per second. Now, if I go to the 4K mode, then it goes up to like two hours and five minutes, which is to me is fine. I'm okay with that. That works. But everybody's talking about the H265 on this camera. And it's like they're saying, oh, it's low quality. I get it. But I didn't buy this camera for to basically use H265. I bought it to use the red raw files because they look so good. Now, I think I do have a workaround for getting it back to your computer so you can store the files and edit them later, but you still would have the issue of it of having to big, buy bigger cards to be able to shoot on Red Raw. So ideally, what I'm going to show you is that, you know, Red Raw file, the sample that I'm going to show you is eight gigabytes. And when you convert it to, I'm going to say red log, that's what I'm calling it, because you're still getting the red image out of it and the colors. All of it is, is completely accurate as long as you save it without it being color graded. So the final file from like an 8 gigabyte file down to 128 megabits is perfect. So it's similar to like if you have an FX3 or a Canon to do an S log 3 or C log 3 or C log 2, right? You're getting still the flexibility to be able to adjust your highlights and your shadows and do temperature and still have that dynamic range opposed to like, well, in, in Red Raw, you have the camera control to where you get to control the ISO and the auto white balance. So you lose that, but you still gain a red log file, right? And you can at least use that if you have clients that you want to keep the files, but you don't want mass storage. So this is the way that I'm going to go in the future because I do have clients that do long interviews. So I'm just going to convert them to red log and keep those files in case. Now the question is, do I overexpose those files? Um, that's something you're going to have to figure out on your own. I still have to figure that out because this is kind of a new process for me. But anyway, let's jump on to the computer so I can show you how I do this and hopefully save you some storage. Okay, so we are now in DaVinci Resolve. And this is a project that I did for New Year's, not project, but just filming New Year's. It really beautiful colors that came out of this. Um, so I took one of the clips and I brought it over here, right? So this is going to be the one that we'll work with, right? So it's already flat. Um, you can go into your colors and basically um, you have your camera settings, right? So I have already kind of set this up. When you, when you go into it, you'll basically have it as, you know, it, it'll come in as, I believe, um, Red Default or I forget it, Project, I think. That's what it comes in. Okay, so you're going to just select the clip. And I saw that 3200 looks good with this. Temperature is fine. I had it at the correct temperature. So um, this is flat just because, and I've showed this to you guys in other videos, my color management, all I just do is DaVinci, R, the YRGB under color science, timeline, DaVinci, work, gamut, intermediate. And then I go to Rec 709-A. I know people are saying you don't have to do dash A anymore. I've actually tested that and the colors are off. So I'm staying with dash A. Please do not argue with me in the comments about it. When I export whatever I'm doing with dash A, it looks exactly like what's in my timeline. If I don't 
then the colors are different. So I'm staying with this. Please don't argue about it. All right. Um, okay. So let's go back to this. This is the red clip. What I what I'm saying here is you get your your ISO the way you want. If you want it overexposed, you can set it the way you want. This is new to me, so I'm not really sure. I'd have to do tests with Windows to see how much dynamic range is lost if you overexpose it or do perfect exposure. I don't know, but what you want to do is basically go in and output this file. So I'm going to output this as flat test. Okay. So we got MP4. H265. That's what we want. We want H265. And then let me render it. Oh, hold on. Rendering the whole thing. So let me go back to here. I'm gonna go in, out, and then let's render it again. We'll replace that file. Okay. Okay, so rendering this clip. And while that's rendering, I'm going to show you guys something. Um, this file is on my card. Okay, so you can see that this, this file, if I go into my Nikon file, and then I go back to this file, which is named. See the name of this file. Zoom in on it. It's uh, 1885 R3D. Okay, so we'll go to 1885. So now you can see that this is the file right here. It's 8.43 gigabytes, which is a lot. It's a big amount, dude, for a very short amount of clip. So we're going to go back to my desktop, and now we have the flat test, 125.9 megabytes. We will bring this in. We will go back to, well, let's go over here to the file itself. And I just want to show you, like, how these look the same, right? They just, the colors are the same, right? And how I grade my red file is I like this red film bias offset. That's the one I is my go-to. So as you could see from here, you know, like this, the colors are just beautiful, right? These things look just amazing. Um, now, my worry was when I bring it as an H.264 file, can I still keep that same color? And the answer is yes. Same colors. So I'll go back to here and show you, like, the colors are the same. So basically, I just converted my raw file, my red raw, R3D NE, to a red log file. And you can still adjust your highlights in here. You can still adjust your shadows. Now you're not going to have as much room. And now you don't have, okay, that, you don't have any of the clip values anymore because it's not a raw file anymore. Just like this one. Now we're back into the raw file. We have all this. So this is the way I'm going in the future to be able to keep future clients stuff. And I really love the idea that I could do this. We'll go back to here and reset the clip. And as you can see, it is the same. Really, really cool. All right. So hopefully this has helped you. Um, I absolutely love this camera. We're shooting on a Nikon ZR right now, as well as I have one. Yeah, I bought two. I love this camera. It is definitely 
for replacing the Lumix S12 that I bought. I'm just not feeling that camera at all. So um, that camera is gone. I'm still going to keep my A7S III and my Canon R6 II just because I really love the photos and videos from those cameras. But these are basically going to be the ones that I use for my interviews or any videos for corporate clients just because of that red format. It just looks so beautiful. And I know I haven't made a video for a while, but I have been shooting like crazy for Christmas and Thanksgiving. And it just, it all looks so beautiful. And I just so grateful that Nikon and Red got together and made this camera because this is just an absolute beast. And I'm looking forward to the firmware update. I um, just ordered the new the Megadap. I think they did some changes to it where it fixes the the sensor issue that I've done in past videos. And I'm hoping it does. But uh, yeah, just what a camera, man. I'm so stoked on this. And I know the rest of the people that are on YouTube using the Nikon ZR love it just as much as me. So make sure that you like, comment, and please subscribe. You know, more subscribers. I'm hoping to grow this channel to a thousand subs so I could basically start making money on these. But if not, whatever. I like making these videos and I like helping you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.